Hi Liv, I'm Max from Flip Your Wig. How are you doing? I'm good today. How are you doing? I'm good. I want to know everything. I'm hooked. <laughs> Episode one was just like blew my mind. I was like, what am I watching? I love this. This is not what I expected. When you read a script, does it on the paper, does it read how I'm watching it? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, yes, it it does and it doesn't. I mean, when I read it, I imagined it very differently. But then I also couldn't have imagined, you know, the locations where we where we shot and the costumes are just incredible. I would never have imagined that myself because they were so rich in detail in every department. It was wonderful. Um, it, yeah, no, it, 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 it is. It, I was shocked when I first saw it because it, it, you never know what to expect with the editing, but it's fantastic. The music, I really enjoyed watching it, even though it's hard to watch yourself on camera. <laughs> My story begins when I was a young girl. I was alone in the world. My first impression of my fellow man was less than favourable. Is it because she's such a character? She's bold, yeah. she's funny, um, she's smart, she's strong, and clearly somebody who's been emotionally and physically tormented too. Um, this, this kind of thing of like humour and uncomfortable behaviour being merged together, sometimes it's so wonderful to watch. Yeah, I'm really glad you picked that up because it is a really violent show and, and people ask me, you know, what what is, is it a comedy or is it a drama? And it's, it's actually really hard to describe because, you know, it is violent and um, brutal and uh, because that is the time period they live in. But then you do get these, you know, one after the other, these really witty, subtly clever and funny moments. And I think it's so well deserved because the audience need a bit of a breather, a little bit of a breath. But I wouldn't say it's, I don't know, it's hard to do, it, it's just, it's something like I've never read before and seen and it's unique and um, I think people will really enjoy it, really enjoy it. Even people who don't necessarily enjoy period dramas. It's not your typical, not typical, your stereotypical or cliche stuffy period drama, you know, that breaks a lot of those conventions. It doesn't matter what you want. Your marriage has been arranged. France accepts Catherine de' Medici in marriage with Henry, Duke of Orléans. Then something terrible happened. You're playing the young Queen Catherine de' Medici, like she's, you're seeing mm. her become who she becomes. Um, when you find out Samantha Morton is the grown up, queen. Um, I'm a fan of hers, absolutely. Are you freaking out yeah. a little bit? Freaking? Yeah, of course I am, of course. I mean, I'm really glad, because wa I've watched the first three, and I'm really glad I actually didn't see Samantha's performance whilst I was shooting, because I would have been too uh, overwhelmed and imposter syndrome would have would have come out. I mean, she's a wonderful, wonderful actress. Um, so yeah, when I, I mean, I the whole cast, Samantha, um, were just really incredible and it was really such a privilege to be on a set with so much talent and, and actually really good, high quality, the best of the best in every department really, but the cast were just, I couldn't, I, I still get giddy thinking about who I got to work with and, and I, I was texting my mum like, oh, Charles Dance is sitting next to me and we're going to do a scene and it was, it was, it's still crazy to me. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned Charles. He plays your uncle. He's the Pope. Oh my goodness! Oh, he's he's like wickedly brilliant. I but know. The two of you, um, I mean, that first episode. It's quite traumatic to see how he's speaking to you, um, your character, how demeaning he's being about the way she looks. Um, mm. You know everything. But the chemistry between you two, I was just hooked. Working with someone like him, um, he's a bit of a legend. I mean, you're working with some great yeah. people. You shared so much screen time with him. What was that like? Were you trying not to giggle, even though there were like serious moments? Yes, with with him and um, Paul Tahidi and so many, and Adam Garcia. And I remember those Ita uh, the, the scenes in Italy in the Papal Palace with um, Sebastian and the Pope, Charles and Adam. And I remember, yeah, it, 
we were all biting our tongue um, to stop laughing. I mean, to, to work with him, he is a ledge and he was just very, very charming and very, very sweet. And he brought it every single take. And it was like, I don't know, it felt like a masterclass in acting, just, just how natural he is on screen. It, loads of people, but like, it was really amazing to watch in the flesh, two meters distance between us. But yeah, their, their relationship on, on camera is, is horrible. I mean, there's no love there at all. Um, and he is very degrading towards her and mm -hmm. she kind of has to survive. So she kind of has to just put up with it until, you know, she gains enough power to be able to tell him to do one. Not that she, you know, ever does, but um, she, there's a certain quiet re rebellious, rebellious streak in her that um, I think is apparent in the first episode, especially. Yeah. I fell in love. But I was wrong. Do you know what I learned that day? Never trust a single soul. Every girl loves a makeover. You know, we've grown up watching shows like this. I'm like, oh my God. And literally, mm. you those glamorous gowns. Shoes that look super uncomfortable, but incredible on. The makeup, the hair. What was that process like for you, Liv? I mean, I, I thought, I again, I... I the, the costume and the makeup were incredible. At times, I did feel quite like a show pony. <laughs> like I felt like because it's just so over the top, which was the aim. Um, and I felt uh, sometimes a bit ridiculous coming on set with these massive costumes and big hair pieces and crazy makeup. But I also felt very cool. Like it was my time to govern. <laughs> the only way I knew how. Perhaps if we gave him the proper incentive, he would tell us the truth. Cut off his finger. What? what? She's such an interesting character. I'm wondering at the end of the process, what did you take from her that you thought, hmm, I like that. It's going to help me a little bit as me live. Was there anything? Yes. Um, again, that's a good question. I think what I hope I took away from her is her bravery she was an incredibly brave lady um girl young person and um and whilst she was in a very male dominated degrading you know misogynistic patriarchal let's go for it but you know place court she held her own and she was quietly calculating and assured and I think, and she outsmarted them all, really. She outwitted them all. She was cleverer than them all. And for me, I think I, I, whenever I maybe feel the imposter syndrome of not belonging like she did as a foreigner as well, and as a woman, um, I'll take that power stance and like she did with the corset and, and carry on. <laughs> yeah, maybe minus the corset. So maybe I'm minus the corset. Oh God, you can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, you're wonderful in this, you're brilliant. I can't wait to Thank see you. the rest of the series and wishing you so much more success. Thank you for the Thank chat you. today. Have a nice day. Thank you, you too. Bye bye. When you find life conspiring against you, you must change it to your favour, no matter what the cost. Are you with me? I am with you. None of us are safe. You have a serpent in your midst. It's good to be back.